Now, as we all know, Lamar Jackson and his contract situation have been the topic of conversation uh, for a while now, but especially this offseason. And everybody has their different viewpoints on it and their different takes uh, and their different opinions on how they think it's going to go, how they think it should go, what they think both sides should be doing, and even what they think both sides shouldn't be doing. But recently, I had my guy Q come on the channel, and, and we'll drop that entire episode soon, but I just wanted to show y'all this clip of some really, really good points that he brought out, especially when it comes to a quarterback playing on the fifth year option. Let's have a listen. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. You two team keep it clean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graven, right and graven. But my last question before we get out of here, do you think, because it's always nice to get an outside opinion, do you think the Ravens and Lamar Jackson are going to be able to come to a contract agreement? Man, you know, two, if you ask me this question this time last year, I'm like, yeah, they, they, they should, right? It's like a 70% chance that they just figure that out next offseason. But then this thing has been going on so long with Baltimore and... You know, uh, it, this is getting into unprecedented territory where Lamar Jackson is about to play on the fifth year option of the team that drafted him does not happen with first round quarterbacks that that often. Right. We can go back from when they started this rookie contract situation like there has not been a rookie quarterback that's really played on that fifth year option for the team that drafted him. Like maybe once he gets traded and they picked it up, but for the team that drafted you, that never happens, let alone with the guy as decorated as Lamar Jackson, right? Like Baker Mayfield was somebody that was almost an unquestionable, oh, yeah, he's going to get extended after what he did in 2020. He ain't win the MVP in 2020, right? Like Lamar did win the MVP in 2019. So that's like a weird situation for him to still be on his rookie deal. And, you know, then once this thing goes on, right, let's say we live in a world where Lamar, you know, probably – come Monday next week says, Hey, I'm done talking contract. You had your time. You know what I want. Boom. Let's move on. Now, if you're the Ravens, this gets into a part to where every day that goes on in the season, you're losing leverage because you get to a point to where you can no longer negotiate in the off season. Right? So once his contract is up, technically, um, after the, the, I think it's the, after the franchise tag deadline, you're no longer allowed to negotiate with him unless he's a free agent for real. Um, and, once you're at that point, anything goes, right? And I think, you know, there's nothing that accelerates a, a divorce between a quarterback and a team than a franchise tag. I don't think the Ravens would do it, but the Ravens have been traditional enough to think that they can do it. So, again, the options are weighing thin for the Ravens as time goes on. Um, and the deeper you get into the season and he doesn't have a deal – the more and more likely it is. I still think it's 50-50 that he gets a deal done. I think it's more likely than not, like barely. But if, if we get into July, I mean, not July, into June, I mean, uh, January, and there's no do deal done, then, you know, it's no longer 50-50. The odds are that he's probably going to leave Baltimore at that point if they're not willing to give him the money. And it's still at that point of the year. And, the only option Baltimore has if they don't want to give him the money but want to keep him on the Ravens as a franchise tag, then that gets ugly, right? I mean, you're talking about I'm not signing that tag, trade me, all kind of stuff there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's where it can get real ugly. And then even then, it's like we only unless they're willing to do a sign-in trade, and I don't know how sign-in trades work with fully guaranteed contracts because that's what he's shooting for. I don't even think you can get a sign-in trade, right, at that point, right? So... I don't know what the Ravens game plan is. I don't know if they've prepared for worst case scenario, but this is worst case scenario. If this gets into the season and he does not have a deal done, the odds shoot down dramatically on, on the Ravens chances to keep him. Um, and if this gets past the bye week, I would say the bye week is the last point on the Ra And Do you guys have an early or late bye? Oh, it's right in the mid. Is it the like end of, the end of October? If you get past the bye week and there's no deal done, that's where I would I would hit the button where I'm like, okay, 
something's not right, right? Where that deal is just not going to get done. We're talking about franchise tag because that's when, I mean, it should have been done months ago, but once you get past that bye week, that's truly the last opportunity to do anything about this contract before it becomes something to where the Ravens might not have the control that they want over it. Um, and I know fans are going to comment down below. They can always franchise tag and that works in Madden, but Madden is not real life, right? <laughs> you have to deal with relationships and people. And if you're Lamar Jackson, if you let this team for rushing attempts for last two years, you have led this team in rushing yards for three of those years. Um, and you have obviously been their leading passer, an MVP, to have me on the franchise tag is is a ridiculous thing, right? Like, I, it's almost disrespectful for a player of his caliber and his achievement. So, you know, that that's that's where I would start to to I, I would say I would be worried right now about Raven fans, to be honest. Um, if it gets past the bye week, that's past worrying. That's that's where you just need to start letting Eric DeCosta know that this is unacceptable, what you're about to let happen here. Like, you need to get this deal done. Sign the paper, Eric, you know, because that's where I'm like, oh, man, this 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 becomes likely that he's on a different team at the end of next year. Well, by the start of next season. Yeah, man, we'll, we'll see how it all works itself out. And hopefully it does work itself out. And Lamar can be uh, a Baltimore Raven for the foreseeable future. But That's not gotta... what I mean by hopefully, but you know. I... <laughs> <laughs> you just got to wait it out and see what happens, man. Yeah, but, definitely. See, this is one of the biggest reasons why I love hearing so many different people's different perspectives because they can teach you something that you had no clue about, that you weren't thinking about, that wasn't even anything that crossed your mind. But then when they present it, especially when they present it in a respectful way, it's like, oh, wow, I never even thought of that. So shout out to my boy QC. Uh, the full episode to the show we did together will be dropping very soon. But I just wanted to make sure y'all got to hear that excerpt uh, from our show. So make sure you check out his YouTube channel because he has a lot of of great information to say um he has a lot of fun takes he has a lot of fun over there on his youtube channel i'll link that below in the description uh but ravens time is of the essence the clock is ticking because again lamar said after week one once week one shows up he ain't talking no more ravens y'all need to give him plenty to talk about yeah this feels like a dream